Where to begin when trying to explain who is Lydia Thorpe? Maybe a start is to think of her as the Nick Kyrgios of Australian politics. Edgy, unpredictable, angry, funny, real. Oh, and surprisingly committed to her job. The controversial Senator Thorpe is definitely many things, but there's no doubt she's always in control. And after you see her tonight, you might also understand why having more Lydia Thorpes in Canberra could in fact be just what this country needs. There's no bullshit with me. What you see is what you get. I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm not a career politician. I'm not there to be a big shot. You are a, a bona fide troublemaker. Well, for all the right reasons, Carl. To hear the excuses these people give you day in, day out, I just basically cut through the bullshit and call it for what it is. Lydia Thorpe knows how to fight for the underdog because she is one. I didn't go to private school. I'm not a lawyer or a doctor. I come from, you know, the, the hard knocks, I suppose, and that's who they've got in parliament. You grow up in an environment where you've got to fight. Well, I don't fight with my fists anymore. I fight with the, my mouth. Criminals! You're You're the, the, the senator has made a name for herself as a feisty, unhinged independent Speaking Senator Thorpe, about Senator Thorpe, violence. With Senator no Thorpe. respect for the rules. Senator Thorpe, I've called you to order. Please be at order. And her outspoken, combative Senator style has earned her plenty of enemies. What I find offensive is her remarks and her crocodile tears. Both inside Parliament. And how dare you to say shame on you. No sh and out. I do walk around with a bullseye on me. You like the cut and thrust of it though, come on. I love it. And you know what I love? Senate estimates. Because I feel like Black Judge Judy when I'm asking those questions in there. I just sit up there like, yeah, come on. What questions am I going to ask you today? How Judge can you let this happen? This. Do they need black money to do black stuff? But now it's the senator with something to prove. She wants Australia to know there's more to Lydia Thorpe than a big mouth. What really drives her is a big heart. I'm not this angry, crazy black woman out there that hates white people. It's just not who I am. Angry, crazy, not prepared, ill-equipped. What labels hurt? What labels stick? None. None. I've been called so many things since I was a child that after a while, it, it just, it's water off a duck's back. So this is kind of where it all began for you. Yeah, it is. Um, Lydia Thorpe hasn't got anything in life without fighting for it. And this is where she learnt how. In the 70s and 80s, this government housing tower in inner city Melbourne was a rough and tough place to grow up, but it was home. And I was no different in the kindergarten over there, sticking up for, for kids or in, the, in my high school over here. I, I'm still no different from that person. Did you ever, in your wildest imagination and dreaming, think you could get out of here? No, I, I didn't. Life for little Lydia wasn't easy. She left school at just 14. Then at 17, fell pregnant and began raising her own family in government housing where she was the target of abuse. How did the violence not break you? Um, I suppose I was used to violence from my first relationships and it's happened so many times that I just kept getting back up. Lydia's biggest comeback came in 2013. After walking away from a toxic marriage, Lydia says she had no choice but to declare bankruptcy as a single mum of three. And it was the best decision I ever made, even though I lost everything I worked for mm. uh, in my whole working life. So I walked away with my car, packed my, my bag and the rest is history. In 2017, Lydia made history. 
Representing the Greens, she became the first Aboriginal woman in the Victorian Parliament. When she lost her seat at the 2018 election, Lydia looked to Canberra, and within two years, the girl from Fitzroy was a senator, breaking rules from the moment she was sworn in. To the colonising Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Senator Thorpe, yes. Senator Thorpe, you are required to recite the oath as printed on the cards. Does being combative lessen your message? Possibly. Possibly, um, <clears throat> and that's how I think I'm misunderstood. Uh, it, it's coming straight from my heart, straight from my soul. Um, there needs to be some anger in this place, otherwise you're, you become complacent and complicit. That anger was in full flight last month when Lydia used parliamentary privilege to accuse fellow Senator David Van of sexual assault. This person. Senator Thorpe, I, I would just warn you at this me, point. At this point. Sexually that, assaulted that, that, me. Senator, Senator Thorpe. And the Prime Minister had to remove him from his office. Van maintains he did nothing wrong. I utterly reject that statement, that disgusting statement, outright. It's just not true. But when two more women made similar allegations... ...allegations against Senator David Van have escalated. ...he was kicked out of the Liberal Party. Now, Lydia says he's not the only man in Parliament who's crossed the line. And there have been a number of occasions where there have been touches inappropriately that I haven't given permission for um, and have raised it. And, yeah, it's kind of like an attitude that's acceptable. It's, you know, oh, you know, that's just such and such. You know, he always does that. He's just like that. And uh, How does that I make just, you feel? Well, I kind of just sucked it up. You know, I've got such a big job to do that things like that are, I find sometimes is just a distraction and, try, and a way to hold me back. Uh, and it's not like I've never had to deal with that before in my life. But I do put faith into those processes that the parliament are undertaking and I've been fully cooperative every single time. Lydia Thorpe has announced that she'll move to... In less than three years as a senator, Lydia Thorpe has certainly mastered the art of making headlines. Well, happy Assimilation Day. But it's the unwanted attention on her private life that's caused the most controversy. Maxine Strip Club. <sighs> Talk to me, Lydia. Just trying to keep up with you, Lydia. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! whoa. <laughs> Forget the com car. Senator Lydia Thorpe prefers two wheels and fresh air. What could go wrong? Yeah, I wonder. With me involved? Much like politics, <laughs> one minute you're ahead. Why am I doing all the work? <laughs> and the next you're falling behind. I'll see you next... No! Come on! Look at you and all your privilege! But in Canberra, it's not just Lydia's rivals standing in her way. Often, it's her own mistakes. Last year, the senator was slammed for dating former Rebels bikey boss, Dean Martin. <laughs> I did hear that you didn't mind a bad boy on a bike. They're a bit different to this, Carl. They've got a bit more grunt in them. I presume that's all behind you now, though, Lydia. <laughs> oh, well, um, I have lots of friends in lots of places and that's just living the life and um, growing up and uh, in the areas that I've grown up. They're not bad people. Lydia can laugh about it now. A brief relationship with an ex-bikey boss has come at a hefty cost for Green Senator Lydia But Thorpe. at the time, the headlines were a serious problem. I got mauled by the media and, and Senator, whatever your name is, down the front with a big laughter on your face. She held the justice portfolio for the Greens and was receiving confidential briefings about organised crime. Mr Bent uh, has to explain uh, what his office knew. Eventually, Lydia was cleared of any wrongdoing and said the relationship between her and the ex-bikey 
never really existed. Kissed once at a rally on the 26th of January. Had no idea who this person was or his background. My legal advice was to say I dated this person. And I got mauled by all of you. But it's not the only time she's had to explain her way out of a scandal. In February, the senator was removed from Sydney's Mardi Gras parade. And in March, she was tackled by police at a protest outside Parliament House. Then came this. Footage of Lydia outside a Melbourne strip club last month, arguing with a group of men. Lydia insists the blokes started it, but she's the one who ended up banned from the venue for life. Maxine Strip Club. Oh. Talk to me, Lydia. Well, you know, we, we were having a fantastic night. You know, we went to, to have a dance at Girlfriend's 50th from Broadmeadows. You're a senator, what are you doing in a strip club? You know, like, if I was gonna do senator style, I would've rang them up and booked a proper seat. <laughs> and it wasn't until we left, walking out the door, that I was uh, verbally abused. Mm. And the one thing I did do wrong is I reacted to someone else's bad behaviour mm. when I probably shouldn't have. Do you ever shake your head sometimes and go, hey, girl, what up? I'm just like, I missed out. <laughs> I missed out. It's not bad you. It's no. I wish I was there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we're all human. She's got to let off some steam. We all do. She get to a Lydia's point. best mate, Naomi Murphy, is just as good at laughing off the hard times. But deep down, it still hurts to see her friend publicly ridiculed. Oh, look, um, it's heartbreaking to see. Why? It's, it's my sister girl. She's a mum, she's a nan and an auntie and she's being hated on and uh, it's hard to watch. But don't think for a second the backlash will ever stop Lydia Thorpe doing what she wants. In fact, she was so desperate to have that freedom, she quit the green six months ago and became an independent. Did you leave the Greens because you couldn't be a team player or you thought you could be more effective on your own? Uh, I left the Greens for a number of reasons. Uh, as an independent, I can speak on anything that I like. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, as a political party, the Greens are no different to Labor and, and the coalition parties where racism does exist. And Inside the Greens? Inside the Greens. Where from? Um, from places that should know better. Uh, and what was the discussion around the agenda? Lydia's biggest gripe with the Greens was their refusal to side with her over the government's proposed voice to Parliament. The Greens support the upcoming referendum to recognise Indigenous people in the Constitution, but Lydia is voting no. We are the original and only sovereigns of these lands. Instead of the voice, she wants much, much more, starting with a treaty that includes reserving special seats in the Senate for First Nations representatives. Crystal ball time. Does the voice get up? No. No. For the last time, no. Look. Uh, unfortunately, what's on offer is a powerless advisory body. It's not going to make a difference on the ground to people. Don't you worry that if this referendum isn't successful, that it proves that the majority of Australians don't have an appetite for any kind of change? Is that a concern? Uh, look, I'm part of the progressive no, and that's because we want more. Uh, then you have the what is seen to be quite a racist no narrative out there and they talk more about uh, what Aboriginal people are going to take away from you. But Lydia, you're on the same team now. No, Weirdly, I'm not. You're on the same side of the fence on this debate. And that's the problem, Carl. It's, it's weird. Yeah, look, and that's the problem, uh, that 
we're not allowed to say no, otherwise we're put in the racist no camp. Uh, that's not fair. You know, we're not one homogenous group of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We're allowed to think differently and we are allowed to say no on the grounds that it is not enough. It's a fire that burns in my belly every single day and that fire will never go out. How do you describe that fire in your belly? It's what gets me up every day and it what, it's what sustains me. Lydia Thorpe's fire might last forever, but her career in Canberra won't. The senator has already decided to leave when her term ends in 2028. No, I'm really serious about my job. I love my job. Uh, and I've been able to make big changes in the short time that I've been there. I don't um, intend on running again. Really? Oh, definitely not. Why? Well, I'm, I'm 50 next month, Carl, and I don't want to be... I don't want to become an old, crusty politician with, like, old, daggy ideas. We need, we need new people, younger people coming in yeah. with fresh ideas. It's their future, but in the next five years I'll, I'll do as much as I possibly can to bring justice to First Nations people and to make sure that battlers out there uh, aren't struggling the way they are. And do it in your own quiet way? Well, listen to what I'm saying, not how I'm saying it. Uh, and who knows, you might start opening your heart and your mind to what is possible for this country. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, there is help available. Call 1800RESPECT, which is 1800 737 732. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.